Hello, in this lecture we're going to record the adjusting entry related to payroll. We're going to record the journal entry up here on the left hand side and post that to the trial balance over on the right hand side. Trial balance in terms of assets, then liabilities, then equity and the income statement including revenue and expenses. All blue accounts including the income statement being part of equity. We're first going to go through and see if we can find the accounts that will be related to a payroll adjusting entry and then we'll go explain why we are going through this process. So just if we have the trial balance and we know it's an adjusting entry related to payroll, we know that there's going to be at least two accounts affected. And we know that because it's an adjusting entry, it will be as of the end of the time period. In this case, let's say it's the end of the year, 1231, when we make the financial statements. And we know that there's going to be one account above the equity section, which will be a balance sheet account, and one account below the equity section. So let's look at the trial balance and see if we can find an account up here below, above this blue account related to a uh, payroll or wages or something like that if we look through here we see an account called wages payable that's going to be the first account we're going to say hmm that's probably going to be part of our adjusting process there's going to be one income statement account below with a blue line here so we got revenue and expenses we're looking for something related to wages or payroll and we see of course wages expense so before we even know what's going on we can say hmm it looks like wages expense is going to be affected it looks like uh, wages payable will be affected we can also even know which way these will be going because the expenses down here, the income statement accounts, only go one way. The expenses are going to go up. Their debit balance accounts, they're going to go up. So we're going to have to debit that account. So we know we're going to debit wages expense. We may not know exactly what we're going to debit it for, but we know it's going to be a debit. And therefore, if we debit that account and the other account is wages payable, we're going to have to credit wages payable. We can determine that entire process by recognizing the fact that we are doing an adjusting entry and it's related to payroll without even knowing what's going on. Now let's talk about what's going on. What is happening is that wages is usually going to be more on a cash basis. So on the most simplistic wages type of process, we can say, let's say we're paying people on Friday. So every Friday we pay people. And what happens when we pay them in terms of a journal entry is we debit wages expense and we credit cash in that case. Now I know there's going to be taxes involved, but removing the taxes, that would be the most simplistic journal entry at that time. But what if the end of the time period, which will most likely happen, doesn't happen to land on Friday? So our cutoff date, the end of the year when we're making the financial statements in this case, 1231, lands on Wednesday, let's say. That means that as of the date that we make the financial statements, people, workers have worked for three days for which they have not been paid and they will be paid after the next year. They're going to be paid next year for the three days they worked this year. So we're going to have to pull that in to the financial statements. We want to say, hey, readers of the financial statements, we have wages payable on this case, meaning they've, we owe this wages as of this point in time. And we've had wages expenses that have been earned during this point in time, and we need to reflect that on the financial statements. Many problems are going to basically give you the number here. We're not going to do a subtraction problem unless there was something in wages payable in this case. So if we were talking about a problem, the problem would generally say, hey, there's been accrued wages of this amount. We'd have to know that we're going to debit and credit this, these numbers. How would we get it in real life? We would say there's been five days worked possibly. Let's estimate how much then should have been earned in the three days before the cutoff date. So we'd take the amount of the payroll after the five days and do the ratio of three over five to get the amount that would be uh, expensed in this case. In this case, we're going to say it's the 2,500 given to us in the problem. So we're going to say that we're going to debit wages expense for that 2500 We're going to credit wages payable. If we then do that and we post that out, we would say that the wages expense was 193370 debiting it by 2500 increasing the wages because we're doing the same thing to it too. 195870 and the wages uh, payable, the liability, it's going to go from zero up in the credit direction by 2500 to 2500 Assets have now remained the same. Nothing has happened to the green accounts. We can see that the liabilities have increased because we owe our, our workers money that they have now earned. They have earned before this. And the equity is going down. Why? Expenses went up. That brings net income down. That brings equity down. If we want to take a look at the income statement, we can see that income prior was 88680. Uh, that's revenue here, the credit minus the expenses. That's income. Credits are winning. And we brought it down by the 2500 to 86, 8, uh, 180. So we brought net income down, which of course brings the entire equity section down.